Ahoy guys, and thanks so much for joining us today. I know it's been a couple of weeks since our last posting, but once Maddie and Richie got back on board, things got busy. We've started traveling again, which of course has made both time and internet a little bit scarce. But now, this week, I'll start catching you up on some of my new cruising gear reviews, and then you'll get to meet the new crew and join us on our next adventures. So again, thanks for watching, you know we appreciate it, and I hope you enjoy today's video. Outside temperature, inside temperature. It looks nice outside. We're getting some sun. Our savior. 27 degrees setting. Twelve hundred watts of solar, four hundred going out in air conditioning. Ah, we got well four hundred right now, but somebody's using the bathroom and a bunch of pumps running. But we're still putting in about five to six hundred watts of solar, even with the air conditioning running. Very cool. <laughs> So luckily we got Thomas's fridge back up and running without too much difficulty. So it turned out to be just the broken fan, which was causing an overload on the circuit. So we got that replaced and it working perfect again. The second one was the exact same thing, surprisingly, a broken fan. So we figured maybe it was the lightning damage that caused both fans to give out, not sure. But we put in brand new fans and now they're both working, so perfect. But getting back to these set power fridges, you remember I set one of these up to test that we were going to put on Thomas's boat so he'd have something to use in case we didn't get the fridge working. Well, I've been running this thing for over three days just to test it and see how much power it was going to use to keep things, you know, at an almost frozen level. So I set it at about minus one Celsius or about 32 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And you remember it froze that water bottle almost within three hours. I was quite surprised that it managed to bring the temperature down that fast. But I tested it three days later using my device here. So on this gauge, this gauge told me that it used 1.6 kilowatt hours over the course of three solid days. So just over a half a kilowatt per day over three days. But that includes the initial freeze down period when it probably ran for the first six to eight hours just to freeze everything down or, you know, get everything down to temperature that we put in the fridge. Because I put room temperature water in also. It had to bring it down to that level before it could actually freeze it. So I was very impressed with that result, but then I wanted to bring it outside and see how much power is it going to use when we leave it outside, not in the air conditioning, and especially when the sun is shining on it, because you remember it's black. So I put it here on the side of the boat where it gets afternoon sunshine and it will cause this to heat up quite a bit. I didn't want to put it directly outside just because I wasn't paying attention to it for the entire time. And if it rained, I didn't want to cause damage to the unit. I'm not sure if it's waterproof and I don't want to test that before I even, you know, get a chance to use it. But I put it out here to get an idea how much power it's actually going to use in a real world environment that is hot. Our temperature is average 32 degrees Celsius and of course in the sun it's going to be much more. So I turned the thermostat down to minus 12 degrees Celsius and you can see right here it just turned on it's at minus 10 so it turns on at minus 10 and shuts off at minus 12. it is virtually silent like you can't even hear it you got to be very very close to it to hear it so i'm quite impressed with the, the sound level if we look at this right here it's drawing 60 watts so 60 watts is the operating load that it will maintain for as long as it's running but of course it doesn't run full time now, if you look closely at the top, you'll see the digits 1046. Now, that number represents exactly how much time it's been running in the last 24 hours. Because, basically, I plugged this device in at 10 a.m. yesterday to start measuring how much power it uses over the course of 24 hours. So, now, it's 10 a.m., we've had a full day, and we look over to the next function, and you can see 
It's used 0.678 kilowatt hours per 24 hours, operating at 10 hours and 47 minutes of total operating time since I started measuring yesterday. Now I have to admit, I was fairly surprised with that again also because this thing sat here for many, many hours with the sun directly across half the cabinet here just coming in that side of the boat and it was hot. <laughs> I tested it with my hand even and it was hot. So I figured it was gonna consume quite a bit more power than that. But even dropping the temperature to minus 12 degrees and using it as a deep freeze, and you can see everything inside, it's well frozen. You know, I put lots of different meats and fish and stuff, and this stuff, it's frozen. The water, that was the first thing to freeze, but yeah, it's all hard as a rock. So it did do an excellent job. The only thing I will say, is you'll see there's moisture around here. Okay, so that tells me that there might be a little bit of an issue, or maybe it could use a better gasket here, something a little bit, you know, stronger, because there's obviously some vapor transferring there that is causing a little bit of the heat loss to get outside and causing this condensation. But really, I have to say that's kind of a minor issue considering how little power this thing actually used over the course of 24 hours. I mean, less than 0.7 of a kilowatt hour at a freezer level. So, I mean, minus 12 is about 10 degrees Fahrenheit. That's cold, and it's definitely cold enough to keep everything very frozen inside, and even operating outside if you're camping or an RV or anything like that, you're gonna draw about three quarters of a kilowatt hour per day. That's about 20 kilowatt hours per month, so that's pretty efficient for a small appliance, I must admit. So, all I can say is to the set power, I've still got another one to test, but this one gets the thumbs up. I really like this, and uh, I'm surprised that it worked as good as it did, especially considering the black case. Why are we going out of a gas station? Aren't this electric? Well, it's interesting, you know, they sell gasoline there, just not diesel. Yeah. But what was it, 4.30 or something a gallon? Uh, Which is, yeah. it's not bad, it's okay compared to where we've been. It was 1.28 per liter. So that's, yeah. uh, for my Norwegian viewers, that's 12 kroner. Uh, 12 kroner per liter. <laughs> yeah, and... That's these... like uh, one third of the price of back home. Wow. One, one third. Yeah, he said it was like four dollars and thirty something yeah. per gallon U.S. dollars. Yeah. Well, back home it's but like no diesel. Uh, That's now the it's like uh, oh, it's cheap. It's below thirty. It's like right. less than three dollars per liter. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Three dollars per liter. I can't even imagine. How can you? You know what? No. I'm so glad I'm here. Everybody back home always asks me, "How do you afford to live down there in the Caribbean or wherever?" Like, ah. How do you afford to live there? <laughs> That's my question. Cause... When you look at the electric bills back home, you are lucky to have a lot of solar. And yeah, well, and... I know. This thing's electric. I haven't yeah. bought gasoline for this thing in over a year. Yeah. It's all been solar powered. Yeah. I just charge it from the boat. You know, once in a while, we don't get enough sun. I charge it from the diesel in the boat. But, you know, we're talking very, very few and far between. And it's... The boat runs, I'd say, 80, 80 to 85% solar. Uh, this place runs on 80% rum. <laughs> Agua. Uh, control of the lead. Oh, this guy's, yeah. this guy's flying. Crazy. Yeah, control of the lead. It's like a reset. Yeah. <laughs> He's flying, right. dude. almost dangerous to be sitting out here and be run over all these uh, hangas on both levels. Uh -huh. Okay, here we go. Back on the move. Okay, fasten seat belts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fasten your seat belts. I'm only doing 500 watts, but if I floor it, you better hold on. Watch. There will be no serving on this short flight. You ready? <laughs> yeah. Oh, bravo. Hey. Look at this! Yeah, it's a serious wake for an electric dinghy. But it's a waste of power. <laughs> So 
So today on our walk through town, we discovered that Panama is preparing for its Independence Day festivities. Now in Panama, and especially here in Bocas del Toro, they take their holidays very seriously. For an entire week before the actual Independence Day festival started, all the kids were out every single day walking the streets, banging their drums, and practicing their music for the parades. It was quite a sight, and you could hear it for miles, but they were having a lot of fun. And that's when Thomas and I discovered our new favorite food truck, because who doesn't love street food once in a while? I mean, fried chicken may not be the best for you, but it sure is good. Well, sometimes, right? <laughs> Okay, so back to our set powers. I'm all finished with this one, and this one, just so you know, is the TC65. That's the model number on the website, which is 65 liter or 69 quart. So this one, as you know, I was very impressed with. Now we have the second one that they sent me, which is this guy right here. And this device is the AJ50 on the website, which is 50 liters or 53 quarts. And again, it has the same digital controls on top, so you can switch it between Celsius or Fahrenheit. I've got it operating on Celsius and using it as a freezer at minus 7 to minus 8 degrees right now. You can also see it has two modes, max or eco, which are just switchable back and forth from right here. So if you want to freeze it down really fast, you leave it on max. When you get it down to the temperature that you want, just switch it to eco, and it will just hold it there using less energy. And of course, if we open it up from this end, you'll see inside it's got a basket with two different compartments and a non-freezer section here. So if this is all frozen, which right now it is, this keeps everything about 10 degrees Fahrenheit, less temperature, so not quite frozen. But if you look under here, yeah, we just filled this full of fresh tuna and stuff that we packed up the other day in vacuum bags, and it is frozen solid, so very good. And we have a lot of mahi-mahi down below, and that stuff is frozen hard as a rock. So this thing is working very, very well, even just at a normal temperature setting of around minus seven. Now I ran this at a temperature of about minus two Celsius for two solid days. I think that's around 28 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit. But after two solid days, I measured all the power that it consumed. And let's see, if you look at this, you'll see right here, it says 0.9 kilowatt hours. And that's for two solid days consumption operating at minus two Celsius. So for 48 hours usage, you look at the top number, 1726. So it operated for just over 17 hours out of 48 hours to keep everything at just borderline frozen. That's impressive. I was very surprised with that. Now, like the other one, it does come with this charging adapter here. So you can use it on any voltage you want. It'll plug directly via a cigarette lighter into 12 volt or 24 volt DC source. And if you want to plug it into your house, you can use this adapter right here, which runs on anywhere from 120 to 240 volts input. And it will adapt down to the output size of 12 volt ZC. Now I will say I ran both of these settings. So I ran the system with and without this adapter. So I hooked it up to one of the solar generators that I'm also testing and found that when I'm using the adapter, it draws about 60 watts to run, okay? Now, without the adapter, just plug directly into the cigarette lighter like you see here. When it's plugged directly into 12 volt DC source or 24 volts, it runs on 50 watts. Now, 50 watts, 60 watts, doesn't really sound like it makes much difference, and in the overall scheme of things, it doesn't. But it is a 20% increase just for using the adapter, which is because even if you're using one of these units, you've got a battery inside that can run the unit directly. But if you take the battery and convert through the inverter up to 120 volts and then feed this transformer with 120 volts, convert it back down to 12 volts, well, you can see you're just, you've got a lot of losses right there that are completely unnecessary. So it doesn't make sense to use this if you have a battery that you can plug in directly. Now, the other thing I wanted to test by using one of the solar generators is, can the system run independently, indefinitely? And the answer is pretty much yes. I have it hooked up to this one, which is the FF Power 2 kilowatt LFP battery based system, which charges from solar panels. And I have it hooked up through a folding 400 watt panel that you see right there. 
Now that panel is a 400 watt panel. So with just the one panel hooked up to the power station, it'll put in an average of one kilowatt hour per day in average conditions, meaning partly sunny, partly cloudy. That's the average for this system since I've been testing it over the last couple of months. Now with the set power only using less than half a kilowatt per day, Obviously it's no problem for this system to run it indefinitely. And all I did is hook it into the cigarette lighter. As you can see, it's just plugged in directly right here. And if you look at the display, the solar panel right now, even in shaded conditions, is putting out 78 watts. The unit is drawing 60 watts. So it's no problem for this power station hooked up to the one panel to run this system indefinitely, which makes it a perfect system for an off-grid system, whether you're using RV or camping or a tiny home, whatever you want. And of course, if you're gonna run more appliances or more accessories, add more solar panels simple as that but back to the set powers i have to say i'm very impressed with the build quality i'm impressed with the test results the efficiency is very good the the functionality is very good everything freezes down very fast and it maintains it no problem at all both of them are very efficient and use very little power on the boat so they don't you know put a huge dent in our power curve by any stretch we always have surplus from all of our solar up on top of the boat so this is just one more place that we put it when we're testing new gear so just to recap again the first one that we tested was the tc65 which is 65 liters or 69 quarts it's on the website at setpowerusa.com at a retail price of 5.99 less your discounts and they have given me a discount code to offer you guys that i'll post a link to in the text description below the second freezer here is the aj50 on the website it has a retail price of 349 dollars but again i'll post the link with the discount code for you guys in the text description below so i hope you enjoyed the video if you learned anything today don't forget to like and subscribe if you really enjoyed it feel free to share it with your friends and i hope you guys have a great day on that we'll see you in the next episode ciao for now Friends coming. <laughs> Mr. B. <Good> to <laughs> How are you, man? Good to see you. Oh, good to see you. A good trip? Oh, yeah. yeah a great trip. Cool, man. Good, good, good. Yeah, sorry we're late for the airport. Oh, no, no worries. Tom is in a big mess. <laughs> we're trying to sort it out, but... Sounds on. like we got a lot of steak to eat. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Panama. <laughs> Good to be back. <laughs>